Beneath the shadows of ancient trees, amidst the quiet forest near Cookshaven, lies an enigma over 5,000 years old. This is the Biltzen Bet, a relic from the Stone Age. But what secrets do these stones guard? What ancient rituals and legends lie hidden within their cold, silent embrace? For centuries, this site has captivated historians, archaeologists, and mystics alike. Join me as we embark on a journey into the past to uncover the mysteries of this ancient megalithic tomb. The Biltzen Bet belongs to a family of ancient structures known as megalithic tombs scattered across northern Europe. These stone monuments, often shrouded in mist and mystery, served as burial sites for Neolithic peoples. Their construction marked the beginning of a new era, an era where the dead were honored and the living sought to commune with the forces beyond this world. Megalithic tombs like the Bilzenbet were not mere graves, they were sacred spaces. For the communities of the Stone Age, death was not an end, but a passage. These tombs were seen as gateways to the realm of the ancestors, and building them required both spiritual intent and immense physical effort. But what drove our ancestors to construct these stone giants, and what beliefs surrounded their use? In a time long before recorded history, the forests around Cuckshaven were home to a small tribe led by a druid named Arvid. The Biltzen Bet, a name meaning stone bed, was his chosen site for rituals that bridged the worlds of the living and the dead. As a druid, Arvid held a profound understanding of the natural world, its cycles, and its hidden forces. On nights when the moon was full, Arvid would lead his people to the Biltzen Bet. They would gather around the stones, chanting softly as the flames of their torches flickered in the dark. Arvid, cloaked in furs and adorned with sacred symbols, would approach the central stone, a portal, he believed, to the world of the ancestors. Here, he would place offerings of grains, bones, and carved trinkets, gifts meant to honor the spirits and seek their guidance. For Arvid and his people, the land was not just a place to live, it was a sacred entity filled with life and spirit. Every tree, river, and stone held a deeper meaning, a connection to the forces that governed their world. The forests surrounding the Bilzenbet were seen as ancient guardians, watching over the tribe and providing them with sustenance and shelter. The rivers that flowed nearby were thought to carry the whispers of the earth itself guiding the tribe in times of uncertainty. To them, every part of nature had its own spirit. The rivers were treated as lifelines, their waters used not only for drinking, but also in sacred rituals to purify and connect with the spirits. When they entered the forests, they would move with respect, stepping lightly upon the earth, for they believed that each tree housed an ancient soul. Arvid, as the tribe's druid, would often stand at the river's edge, listening to its gentle murmur, seeking guidance for the tribe's future. It was this deep reverence for nature that led Arvid to choose the Bilsenbet's location. He believed that the tomb, surrounded by ancient oaks and fed by the nearby river, lay at the heart of a powerful energy, an energy that connected the heavens, the earth, and the underworld. For Arvid's people, this land was holy, a sanctuary where life and death existed in a delicate balance. And so the Biltzen Bet was not simply built upon the land, it was forged with it, an extension of the Earth's sacred power. Building the Biltzen Bet was an endeavor that required not only physical strength, but also deep spiritual dedication. Arvid and his people knew that constructing this sacred tomb would be no ordinary task. It was to be a sanctuary that would endure for millennia. The process began with a careful selection of stones, which were chosen not only for their size and shape, but also for their spiritual resonance. Each stone, they believed, held a unique energy that would contribute to the tomb's power. The stones had to be quarried from distant lands, 
sometimes miles away from the burial site. Without modern machinery, the tribe relied on ingenuity and sheer determination. They used stone tools to carve the rocks, slowly chipping away to create flat surfaces that could be stacked securely. Moving these multi-ton monoliths was a feat of both engineering and faith. Arvid led the tribe in constructing massive sledges out of thick tree trunks, which were used to transport the stones. With ropes made from animal hides and woven fibers, the tribe worked in unison, dragging the stones across the land. This was not done without ritual. Every morning before the day's labor began, Arvid would lead a ceremony to seek the blessing of the forest spirits and the ancestors. Offerings of grains, herbs, and small animal bones were laid at the base of the stones, asking for strength and protection. As they hauled the massive rocks through the forest, chants filled the air, creating a rhythm that synchronized their movements. It was believed that these chants could imbue the stones with jewel energy, making the tomb a place where the living and the dead could connect. Once the stones reached the site, the process of erecting them began. Wooden levers, stones, and earth ramps were employed to slowly lift each monolith into position. The tribe's strongest members would dig deep holes to anchor the stones, while others packed earth and smaller rocks around the base to secure them upright. The main entrance faced the setting sun during the equinox. The central chamber, where the most sacred rituals would later take place, was constructed last. Arvid inscribed symbols and runes onto the stones of the inner chamber, invoking the spirits of the earth and sky. This final act of carving was more than decoration, it was a spiritual sealing of the tomb, marking it as a place of power and connection. When the last stone was finally set in place, the tribe gathered for a great ceremony, lighting fires around the tomb and offering thanks to the spirits for their guidance and strength. The construction of the Bilton Bet took years, but for Arvid and his people, it was a labor of devotion. Every stone laid, every chant sung, and every drop of sweat shed became part of the tomb's essence. The Biltzen Bet was not simply built, it was consecrated, becoming a bridge between worlds, a legacy etched into the very land itself. Centuries passed, and the Bilzen Bet faded into the background of history. Its stones stood silently as generations came and went, the site slowly being forgotten. Then, in the 20th century, with the push for agricultural development, these ancient stones were seen as nothing more than obstacles. Plans were made to clear the land and repurpose it for modern use. The decision was made to blast the stones apart. Explosives were placed, and the charges set. But in a remarkable turn of events, the blast was not entirely successful. While some stones were damaged and shifted, the central structure of the Bilson Bet held firm, as if defying the very forces of destruction. Some locals say that it was the spirit of Arvid, the ancient druid, protecting the stones he once consecrated. Whether myth or coincidence, the attempted demolition serves as a reminder that these ancient places hold more power and mystery than we often realize. Modern archaeologists have uncovered fragments of pottery, stone tools, and even traces of ancient fires within the Biltzen Bet. These finds suggest that the tomb was not just a burial site, but a place of ritual. Could these be remnants of Arvid's ceremonies? Were these stones truly meant to bridge the gap between worlds? Local folklore speaks of strange happenings near the Biltzen Bet. Some say that on certain nights, 
The air around the stones hums with an energy, a faint echo of the rituals performed here millennia ago. These myths, passed down through generations, blur the lines between history and legend, between reality and the spiritual realm. Today, the Bilson Bet stands as a monument to our shared past. Its stones are more than mere relics. They are storytellers. They speak of Arvid and his people, of rituals and beliefs, of the enduring struggle to protect what is sacred. The failed demolition serves as a stark reminder of our responsibility to guard these ancient sites. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the ancient mysteries of the Bilson Bet. If you enjoyed uncovering its secrets, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more explorations into history's hidden wonders.